Hi Pisces. So here we are, mid-April. I'm gonna go ahead and do your April reading. And here we are saging just a little bit. I'm switching up my cards. You are actually the last sign that I'm doing. It's like I saved the best for last. And I'm gonna go ahead and do your reading, of course different. If you've been watching me at all, you know that things seldom stay the same when I do them. But I wanted to get some really good juju in here for you guys. I'm gonna sage my phone because I've been having some ish with these phones. And there we go. I may have to actually take that off camera. Otherwise it will continue to burn. We'll see what transpires. Okay. Hopefully that's not a bad idea. We'll see. Okay, Pisces. So um, like I talked about, we're gonna do things differently. I'm introducing the mudras um, more consistently into my game. So here we go. I would love to know for my Pisces, my deep, warm, energetic, social Pisces, I would like to know what's going on with Pisces, what is going to be the best mood draw for them for this month, for the month of April, whatever's going to help them, heal them, grow them, whatever it is that Pisces needs. Thank you. Okay, solar plexus energy, Manipura. Um, it's a third chakra going from the bottom up. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to hold this and then read it at the same time. It, the meaning is the city of gems, the location solar plexus. The sound is ram, the color is golden yellow, and the symbol is 10, the 10 petal lotus flower. Rules digestion, pancreas. The element is fire and the qualities are vitality, determination, conscious effort, and divine will. With that, I'm going to go ahead and pull an actual mudra card, and it's going to be the first of the same color because I want it to belong to the third chakra, the Mani Buddha, solar plexus. And the first thing that we get is transformation. Okay, so we're going to do the transformation Matangi, Matangi Mudra. If you want better pronunciation, please do Google. Matangi or Matangi Mudra. Assist with assimilate vital energy, life purpose. The benefits are enhances digestion, assimilation of life experiences. <sighs> okay, we'll get into that in a minute. Support circulation, lymphatic systems, cultivates energy, passion, and divine will. The instructions interlace the fingers of both hands with a thumb over the left thumb. With the right thumb over the left thumb, extend the middle finger straight out with the pads of the two fingers touching. Rest the base of the wrist into the solar plexus just above where the ribs meet. Relax the shoulders and lengthen the spine. It again helps with digestive tissues such as the ulcers and acid reflux, so you want to use this with caution. Okay, um interesting interlace i'm gonna try to do before i do okay interlace the fingers of both hands with the right thumb over the left extend the middle fingers we can all do that right straight out with the pads of the two fingers touching rest the base of the wrist into the solar plexus where the ribs meet relax the shoulders and lengthen the spine that's really like an awkward Wow. <laughs> okay, I don't know if I did this right, but it sure looks right to me. Yeah. Okay, well, that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to go ahead and read to you the little mantra. So we're going to go ahead and be in this position if I can get it. Crystal, you know how to do that middle finger. Don't lie. So here we are. And um, I'm really, I'm kind of laughing. I hope that this is like correct, but. See, so it says focus inner, um, your focus, inner light illuminate, illuminates and guides me on my path. Okay, so breathe in and put this where it should be. Now that you can see this, I'll have to move the camera next time. Okay, pretend that's my solar plexus, but it's not. In, out, in, out. I 
can definitely feel the energy anyways. One last time, breathe in. Lengthen that spine and just kind of relax into it. Inner light illuminates and guides me on my path. One more time. All right, you guys. I'm going to post this at the very end of your reading so you have a chance to take a look at it yourself. So you can kind of explore, read about it, if you will, practice it, hopefully. You don't have to. Of course, I'm not your mom. So we can do whatever we want, right, Pisces? What else do we need to know? Okay, assimilation of life experiences. The reason why I kind of like smirk a little bit. I went for a walk with my dogs and I'm thinking to myself, I just got hit with this like really hard message. And I'm like, Rosal, keep this stuff to yourself. And then Pisces, here we are telling the whole world. Only you, Pisces. The whole world, only you. But I'm thinking to myself about really heavy things that I've undergone through in the past. And I've had a message about like the divine masculine, the divine feminine. Oh, hi. This is going to be yours too, by the way. And um, the message was that I've been in my masculine energy and I'm going to be 15 this year in August. And so being masculine in your masculine energy for 50 years is going to be really difficult and, um, kind of a mind blowing experience to change. And I already knew that when spirit came at me like that, I'm thinking, uh, yeah, like leave it alone. It's been 50 years. Why mess with things now? Right. But I know it's got to change. And this morning I got another message reinforcing exactly what, what it is that I have to share about. And it really makes me struggle. So I'm still trying to work through this. But uh, it's going to be something I'm going to wind up sharing with my channel anyways. And uh, Pisces, it just, you know, in a nutshell, is sharing traumatic experiences and seeing how the Tarot and building a small community of uh, people that are survivors are able to... Um, kind of connect or use me as a support system or be inspired by my story or have a laugh, whatever it is that you want, right? But it's really, if you've undergone any level of trauma, you know, and most of us have, how difficult that is to undergo, let alone be vulnerable in front of people and kind of um, put that out there. But yeah, that's what I was undergoing. That's why I had to really like get grounded before I came to do your reading. And then we have that um, Matanji Mudra. I totally like sabotage the pronunciation. Moving on, back to you, Pisces. So I'm still in the process of um, pulling these other cards for you, but I want to show you this, okay? You're in a period of transformation just like I am, okay? I'm getting a lot of energy on my crown chakra, and I'm going to tell you that that energy, you may be tempted just like I am to kind of redirect, redirect. I don't want to mess with that. Redirect, kind of like... Um, I love the energy and I'm grateful, but I want it to go this way. You want to become sort of like an airbender. And while some of that is good, some of this transformation is going to require you to be very brave. And that means like being fearful and doing it anyways, right? So I'm just putting that out there because I feel like it is directly connected to the message. Um, and I'll attach that at the very end of your reading. Now your next, um, your next <laughs> mudra is going to be this guy, Padma Mudra. Okay. Unconditional love. And this is like one of my all time favorite ones. I love to do this one because to me, it just looks so pretty. I know it's kind of ridiculous, but, um, Pisces bear with me. Okay. Padma Mudra. Okay. This is this with gratitude, open heart, empathy, the benefits. It supports a cardio respiratory and immune systems, increase in circulation in the chest, heart, and lungs. Oh, I had to see if I was still recording. I'm like, did I even press record? I'm like prattling on by myself. Instructions. With fingers pointing upward, with the heels of the hands together, keep the pinky fingers and thumbs together. Spread the other fingers. Bring the hands to the front of the heart. Relax shoulders down and lengthen the spine. Okay. And the focus or the mantra for this is going to be my heart blossoms. My heart blossoms open with unconditional love. <coughs> We're going to... We're going to make an attempt at demonstrating Padma Mudra. So you're going to do this. Okay, where's the camera? I have a new phone. Not that I wanted it, but I am here for it. I'm grateful. And uh, I'm having a hard time because that camera's really high all of a sudden. Let's see if we sit back just there. Okay, that's better, right? 
Um, yeah. So Padma Mudra. And we're going to do this. And you're going to keep your thumbs and your pinkies together. And so it looks literally like a lotus flower. I got big old hands, you guys, so I think it's really cool. So, like, you could be all like, I'm spiritual. I'm just kidding. But um, unconditional love mudra, okay? So when you're in it, let's just breathe into this. And hold it by your heart. Breathe. My heart blossoms open with unconditional love. My heart blossoms open with unconditional love. One last time. Okay. So these are your mudras, okay? I'm going to go ahead and attach all that for you at the very end of your reading. Next thing that I want to go into... Okay, we already explored how you're the great airbender right now, right? I don't know if you have um, children or if you know about that um, cartoon. I think it's called the airbender. I don't know. Anyways, my son is 18 now, and I guess those are days of the past for me. Yeah. That's what happens when you have one kid, Pisces. But here we go. Pisces, what can we tell Pisces about the energy that their loved ones from the other side are bringing them and right away it's interesting because I see all of a sudden a lot of darkness and then I see someone energetically hovering and there's like a beautiful orange yellow plant in the middle and they're just kind of like nurturing and the plants almost like a fire and it's just really beautiful and I feel like that's saying that your ancestors are really trying to nurture the fire within you the good fire the fire that feels um, makes you feel juicy about life excited I'm um, happy glowing Mm hmm okay I feel like uh, Pisces you've taken some time out to really in, in, currently looking in the mirror and not like superficial mirror right we're looking in the mirror to see like who who's really in there like am I really this radiant being that people think I am and energetic with all the beautiful colors and I can navigate everything gracefully um, and yeah that's a part of you but who's in there like deep down inside and I feel like you kind of have a mental block look at um, this little area it's almost like an auric halo or something like that over that person I feel like in this instance you're kind of looking at yourself more than communing with um, spirits from the other side okay that's what I'm getting so although you are beautiful and incredibly like alluring to people there's a part of you that you haven't really let out or that you haven't dealt with. You're trying to deal with privately, not unlike myself, Pisces. So here we go. What else is good for my Pisces friends? Piscean. Hmm. Okay. So right away, you can't mistake. And I mean, these are different decks and there is no coincidences and it's like, look, this being your heavenly beings, your team, your spiritual team, um, your ancestors on the other side are definitely helping you navigate this. Uh, and I will attach it again. But take a look at this. Whatever's blooming, and it's that unconditional love, that Padma Mudra echo that I'm feeling. Unconditional love, yeah. Um, and that's being nurtured within you. And I think that you might feel like you're in a dark place and you're like, you know, I don't really care about that. I need to... Um, kind of deal with what I need to deal with and I get that and I respect that but it's still happening for you the way that you are um, dealing some of you guys could be in a depression right now I feel because look at this person looks kind of depressed kind of like lost and I feel like you are having ancestors come and like comfort you and they're wanting to help you um, to nurture and give birth and transmute that power, that energy, into something completely different, not depression anymore. You were not brought onto this earth to be depressed and to be sad and to um, hang on to that energy. That energy really needs to be transmuted with us all. And that's something that we can really bring something beautiful towards other people, help heal other people, or connect with other people, something like that, of that nature, okay? So although you might be in a really um, bad way emotionally, look, you guys 
not to rant, but here we are, right? Pisces, we're ranting, ranting, darn it. Um, this pandemic thing and the global issue and the situation with borders and this whole hot mess of let's quarantine, now you're in isolation, now you're, you know, it's a big thing of like Simon says, and it's really caused a lot of like mental health issues. If you didn't have them before, you certainly have them now, don't we? Um, so I'm going to say that you're not alone and feeling like isolated. And even if you've undergone things that are extremely private, like now it's even more of a distant because you're not having like totally all those outlets that maybe you had before. Maybe part of your team, your, your people on earth are like, you know, heck no, I'm not going to see the light of day until Corona is eradicated from the earth. And then the other part is like, yeah, I just live my life and do what I want. And then you have people in the middle. So I feel like even, even so that has really affected your walkway with people and it's affected your mental, mental health and clarity. Now, um, I feel like those doing those mudras is going to really help restore some of your mental clarity. Some of us, and I don't want to lecture you, some of us are eating like junk food or nervous eating that really contributes because they're filled and loaded with chemicals. So um, I'm just going to say that, yeah, I made an effort to change that as well because I, I noticed there is a lot of brown, brain, bleh, brain fog. Brain fog um, when I consume a lot of like lab cultivated meals. Let's say that. Even snacks, you know. Yeah, not good. So with that, I just happen to like impulsively pick this up door to value so I think about like what value is it like what we put in our mouths what value is it when I want to sit with a bag of Doritos because I'm depressed I'm not gonna lie I'm that girl right and uh it's like well no drugs no sex no rock and roll no going out people aren't hanging out or um, not that I'm the type to really even go out anymore or hang out with people but the fact that I just can't even entertain it mentally is um hmm yeah, I don't like it. I just don't like being told what to do. So I feel like we need to really establish a little bit of a new look as to door to value. And in this case, we're talking about health and about what we're eating and stuff like that. And I've been adding different things to my diet um, in order not to uh, love Doritos so much. No, I'm just kidding. But you know, not, not to eat garbage like that all the time. It's just not healthy for me, mentally, emotionally. So, physically you guys and it's made me really unhappy so maybe you're in the same um area dear pisces so i want to say that you are exploring new things that are door to value now the number 31 is going to get reduced to the number four number four talks to me to me about the emperor about the four corners of the earth about dogma about this is how it's done it has to be done this way this is how i've always done it so is it valuable for you or me to continue eating the way we have our whole lives and what value do we get out of it a momentary um i don't know momentary pleasures right just so okay i feel kind of satisfied now and then we feel bad because we ate garbage um so how valuable is it what are we putting in our mouths and i've switched again my diet to eating a lot of uh and drinking a lot of things that people might consider weird like like uh basil seeds chai seeds making smoothies um eating sweet potatoes which i don't like but uh they're really kind of rich in nutrients and things like that so whatever the door to value is to you the whatever the outcome and you know i'm 50 i'm not like uh 17 or 20 even so i can't be eating like like i did back then and the door to value just isn't there i'm just going to continue getting bigger fatter, sadder, and I don't want that crap. So I'm going to suggest to you that opening up your mind to what the value is to what you're putting in your body, but also what you're putting into your mind. What are you consuming as far as the media goes, as far as TV goes? Um, are you consumed by your own thoughts? These are different things that you want to explore and see how valuable they are to you. Pisces, appreciation. So I feel like for you, like being in this state, if this is you indeed, um, appreciation is gonna really help all of us no matter where you're at, in fact. So appreciating the small things, like this lady, she is dressed beautifully. Um, she's holding up that flower like it is the best flower in the whole wide world, and yet there's a whole bunch behind her. And I love that because regardless of 
you know, I mean, we can have like incredible things. I, we can have the best car, the best horse, the best house, whatever, but there's always more to be had in the world. And if you look and compare, you know, we're always comparing ourselves and what we own to everything else. It's just not a healthy place. So this appreciation card is a reminder, stop and smell the roses. Stop and do a mood draw when you're feeling like low and crappy. Do a couple of mudras and see if that will help you. Um, the door to appreciation, the door to value comes through appreciation, just appreciating where you're at. You know, maybe even the life lessons, even though that they've been rough, that they've been tough, um, that you have come out on top, that you are a survivor, that you still have that kindness and that gentleness that you Pisces are known for, that love, that genuineness. Um, I feel like you're not one to you know, you're just real and genuine. So you're not one to be like, oh, this is a facade and this is me and then present a different face. But appreciating more of what you've undergone or what you have been given, even if it's been like tough lessons, appreciate the very small things. And start out small, start out with, man, I really appreciate these shoes that I wear every day. I don't know, they're comfortable, whatever the case may be. I appreciate being able to look outside the window. I appreciate having my own room. I appreciate, you know, having a vehicle I can go to and from. Whatever the case may be, that's gonna really open up a lot of value. And I think that you're gonna open up a lot that comes to you in that way. One thing that I wanna mention, um, the appreciation card, this lady comes out, is the number 15. When I add them up, it's the number six. And to me, I always feel like with this row card, that's like victory, that's like success, and people cheering you on, looking towards you. Not that we want that all the time, but it's encouraging when you get cheered on. So you know what, Pisces, I wanna say, you go. You continue going and don't stop. And try not to navel gaze so much, but, um, be a little bit proactive. In fact, I'm thinking about um, doing another project where I open up a homework playlist, okay? Things that you can use for homework. So if you're interested in that, please do comment. Look, I'm gonna stop right here. Please do like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll leave that here somewhere. But I always forget that. I always forget how to do that. So look, door to adjacent possibilities, okay? Adjacent? Adjacent? Okay. Yeah. Adjacent, I think. But look at all the doors. What is possible? What exactly is possible? And Pisces, if you're in this like, okay, let's explore, and then you will all of a sudden um, write down a bunch of things that are possible for yourself, I think it's going to be really healthy for you, for sure. Um, the one thing is, it reminds me always of Monsters, Inc. Look at the door on the floor. Um, and going through many different doors and how they're just unconventional. You could have, I feel like you're kind of not reinventing the wheel, but doing things in a way that no one ever has done them before. Um, I feel like once you start getting those juices flowing, that creativeness flowing, you can write down if, for example, if it's about a job, you're like, okay, well, what can I do? I can quit my job. Sure, I can quit my job. And then might be left with nothing. Um, I can wait for the perfect job or I can try to be an entrepreneur and kind of uh, collaborate with myself and my energies and continue having the same job that I have right now in conjunction with something new that I'm attempting to create. Um, you know, there's DoorDash, there's Lyft, and there's a number of uh, different things out there that you can possibly do to incorporate. You can always start a new channel, like your own YouTube channel, and do things like that. Do things that's gonna make your heart glad and happy and like creative and juicy. Um, maybe showing people how to be their authentic self, maybe showing people how to get out of their own depression, if that's something that you struggle with or you're interested in, I don't know. But look here, you have somebody who is going to help, somebody on your corner, number 42. This is a woman holding a coin. Um, and this woman, I feel like she is incredibly wise about how she spends her money, she thinks about things, she doesn't do it foolishly. And she just knows, I mean, she is well-dressed. She likes uh, the finer things in life, but look at this too. In a lot of ways, this woman can be a great mystery to you and everybody around her because you don't really know. Like, it's like, she knows a lot of things and she won't let you know that she knows a lot of things. She'll invest in you though, if there's a good reason to, if she sees that there's going to be a return for her um, time, money, energy, meaning that she will 
potentially give you a job, give you something to do, or she'll collaborate with you, whatever the case may be. But somebody holding a coin could be your mom if you're a younger generation. It could be your mom or someone who you view um, as a motherly type, the number 42, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, I did count that way. Um, you know, again, that is a, about victory, success, and people looking at you and to you and for you. But look, Pisces were riveted with anxiety. Now, I want to point this out right here. If you look at this card, um, these things right here look like scissors to me. And it's reminiscing of like the Three of Swords is heartache. Um, and so this anxiety, I feel like is triggered by heartache. Like the Three of Swords is coming out. Let me see if I find it in a different deck while we talk. While I mean, while I'm saying we, I mean like me, while I talk, okay? <laughs> um, Pisces. You've had some heartbreak, and actually I spoke with um, a new client last night about this, and she is, oddly enough, a Pisces, and similar cards came out for her. And I'm just going to say that this anxiety has a lot to do with the um, the heart, 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 heartbreak that you've had in the past. It's coming out again. I feel like even though you're not worried about things in the same way, for example, if love got you... Um, bummed out and you've got a broken heart over love and stuff like that i feel like that necessarily isn't what you're concerned about because anxiety is like bleeding into all areas of your life okay but the thing is that we don't understand is that that could have been the trigger to open things up and then from there comes a multitude of issues and problems and anxieties so that's just something for you to consider it might you know fit your story it might not if it doesn't fit, don't try to hammer it in there. Keep in mind, this is for a general reading. This is not for everybody. Oh, come now. We're going to find that card. Because I'm determined. Um, anyway, so the Three of Swords is definitely about looking within your heart and seeing what broke your heart in the first place. And most of us have more than just one thing that like really injured and hurt us mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And so um, I'm not asking you to dwell on them because we're coming out of a depression or trying to, but I'm definitely stating that your heart can have a factor in it. And eventually we're going to have to address it, whether it's like using mudras or like light yoga or um, using some homework to be able to get out of that energy. I don't like the idea of like visiting trauma just for the sake of visiting it to see like, yeah, that hurt me. And then you just say stuck in there. No, I feel like it has to do um with transmuting that energy with with bringing this into your life once again sorry i keep reaching here with bringing this into your life once again with that channeling um of new energy transmutation of energy that we all want in our lives okay so this is what i feel like is going on so while you had a broken heart it's cut into several different things. And this is like a nod to that. I feel like those scissors look to me like swords and it's it's deeply rooted. Something that's caused you from a long, long time ago, but it's never fully healed. And then that wound gets triggered by many different little things. And pretty soon any little thing is like just upsetting or painful, or you kind of like react to it. I'm gonna post that at the very end of your reading as well, just so you can look at it, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you that the card that came behind that is the sun. My absolute favorite card. And yeah, heck yeah, I'm going to attach this one too. Um, the sun is just about being looked at very favorably. But more important than that, feeling good about yourself. Feeling juicy. Feeling like a child. Feeling new. Feeling like, you know what? It doesn't make a difference. Like, this person doesn't care if she is seen bathing in basically like a teacup even though it's not a teacup it's like a bird bath or something i always feel like it's like a teacup and she doesn't care if people see her bathing in it it's a little mini pond um there's a lot of different like things here there's a book for her to read there's a little like trumpet for her to play should she wish um lily pads and then the sun and it's just about doing things that make you feel happy and content within you but it's reinforcing that that heartbreak really did some damage um there needs to be a little bit of work and you know ideally we should all be in therapy i think a lot of us anyway so it's getting a little bit therapy but a lot of us can't afford it so here we are here we are on channels like this pisces okay so now i want to move away from that and do a little bit of love okay what's love got to do with it? what's love got to do got to do with it hey 
Tina Turner is a total badass. But uh, I don't know, for some of you guys, that means something. What's love got to do with it? Maybe you're saying, you know what? I'm not even in a place. I don't even care what's love got to do with it. Okay, I'm going to flip this around. What is going on here? Okay, Ace of Wands. This could be about passion, about sex, about creating things. Desire. This person literally has like a ginormous hair follicle almost growing in the center of their head. Um, and if you look, it's almost like fishnets here. Fishnets. Yeah. Okay. Um, the kind that you actually throw into the sea to gather, gather fish. It's trying to capture. You know what's funny? And then also I was thinking before I started, like while I was meditating Pisces, I was thinking, okay, how do you catch a Pisces? How do you catch? I don't know where that thought came from, but this makes me think, well, maybe somebody's out to catch you. So the biggest thing is to have balance. What you're experiencing right now is the alchemy of the old and the new. So if this is you, uh, if any of this part resonated with you, this is like old energy is leaving and being transmuted and new ones coming in. And while it can be really disruptive and appear like what the hell is going on, like happiness, sadness, or the sun and the moon, those um, eventually will temper. I also want to tell you, you do have a guardian angel for some of you with the letter J. Jasmine, Jamie, Jim, <laughs> Jacob, any of those J names. Um, yeah, I feel like you're defensive. You're defensive about love. Even though the fences here I love, they are pretty low. People can come towards you, and that's a good thing. Um, but you have your staff right here, and you're like, oh, womp on you. Like, like nobody's business, Pisces, if you mess with me, right? We don't want to mess with you. We want to love you. So what's going on here? There's some sadness here, thinking about the past, thinking about what's been let, let go of. Yeah, is that how you say it? Um, what is no more? Okay, when you have a sad, the sad, the five of cups, you're actually sad and kind of reminiscing about how things used to be in some way, shape, or form. It could be about love. It could be about something entirely different. Um, moving on. Blech. Eight of Pentacles. I feel like some of you guys are studying or you're being studied. Because I do feel like there's somebody coming towards you that wants to conquer you, that wants to not conquer you in a bad way, but they want to win you. They want to win their Pisces. They want to see um, if they can bring out that lovey-dovey, that juiciness, that uh, fire, that inner siren, okay? Whatever it is that you want to call it. But I do feel like they're studying you. Um, it might take them a little while to come towards you. But they're sitting here diligently studying. Now, if this is not necessarily love, I do feel like it is. I feel like you're the one studying. But look at this. I feel like there's a reference to genealogy. If you look at all these moons and then these radiant rays, if you look real careful, it almost appears to me like a ge genealogical tree. Okay, I can't say that word. Um, but yeah anyways so the tree where it tells you like the family tree oh my god why was that so hard so i feel like you could be studying really late into the night you could be a little bit witchy yourself making little like potions to cleanse yourself to attract love to sage your home cleanse your home all of those things could be a part of it so you're really um you could even be in school actually or taking a course online so i love that card and just for the hell of it i'm gonna catch that one too I can't put everything up because you've seen the cards and what's the point of that. But we're going to move on. Okay, I want to go ahead and pull some ancestors for you. Um, and then after that, we will wrap it up. Show me uh, ancestors for Pisces, please. Who is here for them that they can lean on? We have quite a few. We're going to start with this man here. This man. I don't know if that even helped. Okay. This man here. I feel like he's a very serious young man, definitely an observer. Um, I feel like he just wants to like say something on the verge of saying something, but then he holds back very traditional. And I also feel like if you're not open to energy to communication with ancestors, this one is feeling like I want to tell you something. I want to come towards you and communicate, but I know that you are not open. Okay, so it could be that. So that is one element, your ancestors. The other one, I'm gonna leave that little juicy girl for later. Oh my gosh, they're both juicy, how cute. Okay, so I'm gonna show you these little guys right here. Maybe I'll, there. Okay, so these guys right here are also present. Um, 
I feel like you have your little constant companion. Uh, this guy is super cute. Uh, he is definitely, I feel like he's with you all the time. If you are, you know, a little bit older, it could have been like a miscarriage, a little brother or something like that. But if not, it could have been as far away as like two, three generations ago. So this was a child, maybe eight, nine, six, seven, eight, nine, somewhere on there, that window. Um, even if you've had like a child that you had miscarried, keep in mind that they kind of present with the energy that they are the most comfortable in. So even if they didn't grow to be, you know, whatever age, if they feel that um, and they enjoy that energy, that's the energy that they'll come towards you at. So I think that it's almost like I'm hearing an ace in your pocket, okay? So that can mean something for some of you. This little girl who just fell. Okay, this little girl right here came for you as well. And I feel like she's just a little bit like impish. She likes to kind of be a little bit more of a tomboy. She likes to, um, I don't know, I feel like she likes pets and animals and things like that. And this could be a little bit of your playfulness coming out as well. So those are just energies that could be really helping you from the other side. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to mean that it's like big drama, like, ooh, you have ancestors and they're trying to speak to you and tell you something. It doesn't have to be like that. It could be that they really try to facilitate energies of you getting in the mode of play again, of remembering what it was like young and just to be innocent again and not weighed down so heavy by those energies okay so with that i will be letting you go i am so grateful pisces thank you for your patience um and i appreciate your time and everything so with that much love to you i hope that april is an excellent month and we will be seeing you next month also keep your eye open for my other projects and if you're into like really deep stuff which i feel like you are but we will see how that goes. That's like, uh, I'm gonna think about it, sketch it out and see how I feel. And pretty soon I'm probably gonna just pull the trigger on that. Okay, so with much love to you Pisces, thank you so much and namaste.